Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Deep Lord Podcast. I'm here with my boy, Coom Lord. Hey. And uh, this should be our second podcast, week two. Maybe and, uh, third. Maybe first. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> but this should be number two. Um, and this week, we have Andrew, who's going to be bringing me some interesting topics to talk I'm gonna about. I'm going to be dropping some so. knowledge on you, dude. What do you got for me this week, Andrew? So... Do you know anything about, like, pain or affliction or plague or anything cool like that? About like the plague? Cool, just some, like, cool stuff, you know? No, I don't know very much about the plague. Let me just paint you a picture of what I'm talking about. <clears throat> so, um, picture in your head, like, um, just some... Uh, picture picture your, your... Okay. The vermin carried the disease. Yeah. The vermin and the pets. Okay. There was nothing that anyone could have done to stop it. It spread like wire, wildfire. God damn it. Wildfire engulfing each uh-huh. major city and its surrounding land. Carcasses fell into carcasses, and there was no way for anyone to clear them on their own. The few people that were able to abstain from any interaction with the disease fled the cities and even stayed offline. Wait. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about yes, yet? Yes, I do now. <laughs> I do it's now. A, you are talking a corrupt, about yeah. It's the corrupted blood the corrupted incident. Blood. Okay, so I know virtually nothing about this except that Andrew told me that he wanted to to talk to me about this at some point. So, I mean, where do you start? What do you got? Well, so um, do you know anything about World of Warcraft? Like to Very begin little. with, I played to like level. Never... I played to like level two, and it was free to level ten. <laughs> So, so I was gonna say, so you played the the free trial. So I kind of know that there's like a druid and like a hunter, and uh, that's about the end of my knowledge. <laughs> so, um, the, the Blizzard released a patch um, for World of Warcraft, uh, uh-huh. and it it was supposed to have um, like a new instance and like a bunch of new items that characters could get for like raids and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I, they released it in like 2005, um, and it was patch 1.7.0, um, and it introduced uh, Zol Garub, which okay. was like the f- it was like the first 20 man raid dungeon where uh, you know you were able to like work together to defeat uh, your foes essentially. Um, it was like you know kind of, it was in like a troll setting. Like so, there's this part of um, uh, World of Warcraft called. Um, Stranglethorn Vale. I think it was in Stranglethorn Vale. Okay. Um, there was like a bunch of. Uh, it was either there or it was in Tenaris or s- something. I don't know. It's been a while since I played uh-huh. World of Warcraft. Um, but yeah, so uh, it was like this troll thing. Like they they were like in like the jungle. Like uh, the the uh, main boss was named Blood God Hakar the Soul Flayer. Okay. Um, and I have a picture of that. I don't know how to. S- I guess I could uh, share it with you. Send over. it in the Discord. I'll send it. I'll send it to the Discord. Hold send on. it in the. Um, here, here he is, right here. Good old Hakkar the Soul Flare. Okay. Interesting. Yeah, he's a he's a cool looking guy, right? I mean, yeah. not really, but. I mean, <laughs> he's alright. He's alright. He's alright. Um. So, um, <laughs> and upon entering the fight with uh, Hakkar, <laughs> and I put that big man on here for some reason, <laughs> ha- Hakkar, that, that big, big man. man, there was a, a debuff that he shot onto them. Wow, I put that like he like, came onto them. <laughs> uh, corrupted blood, okay. which would drain the life from your character's uh, HP. Um, it was passed on to characters that were also just standing around that may have been close to the infected player. So you know okay. anybody that you're that you were playing with essentially um, could get like infected anybody in with the raid. It. Generally, is what they were trying to go for, right? Right. Yeah. Um, so like the the only way that um, a player was able to bring the disease outside of Zolgarub is uh-huh. to uh, let their pet get the deb- the debuff. <laughs> then they would dismiss the pet in five seconds and then summon it in a populated area. So you would, you had let's say you had your little uh, murloc or whatever mur- murdoch. They didn't have them back then, but uh, how about a little, little puppy as are. a pet? How's that? Fine. Yeah, sure. A little <laughs> puppy as a pet. 
<laughs> so you pop your little puppy out, you let uh-huh. them get the disease, and then within five seconds you uh, dismiss away. them. Yeah. And then when you come to the uh, you know populated area, you pull your pet out, and everybody starts getting infected. Mm-hmm. Um, so what happened was hunters with their pets, like the the hunter mm-hmm. class, you right. have a pet. Right. Um, so your That's pet the class get... I did play, so I know right the basic. <laughs> yeah. So you um, had so you were a dwarf hunter then. I don't know Am what I, right? I was. I actually think I went horde. Was there a hunter horde? Yeah. Yeah. There was a lot of something I was in. Tro- you could be a troll. Just I don't know like what I was. Guys. I was something, something hunter. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead. So you yeah, pull it so... out when you're in a populated area. <laughs> and uh, so they would, th- their pets would get infected. And then they would relieve their pets and then put them in the stables, which would, I guess, cause um, the other pets in the stables to get the diseases. Because <laughs> it can also be contracted by uh, NPCs. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> okay. So, essentially, what <laughs> what happened was uh, everybody just started dying. Like, okay. millions of characters So So, the, the, the disease, <clears throat> the corrupted blood would, like, what, drain your health over time until you died or what? Yeah, what was so the... it was like a affliction type disease, I guess. So you would um, every like certain amount of seconds, it would uh, leech life from you. So, so it's kind of like a poison debuff. Yeah, but for the lower characters, since it was for a raid and it was for uh-huh. like a at the time a high level raid, which was you know like level sixty or whatever. Uh-huh. Um, at the time, that would have been like the health points that. Uh, it was inflicting like the damage that it was uh-huh. inflicting would have been way too much for like a starter character or just like a you know even like a level 30 or whatever so it could kill you within seconds like new <laughs> characters it could just kill you instantly it <laughs> okay. could just like you you would get afflicted by it and just die and you'd be mm-hmm. like wait what the hell uh-huh. um so like yeah essentially everybody was infected by it there was um what can only be described as piles and piles of bones and bodies okay and I'll, i'm gonna send you i'll send it to you so, right now so when you die in world of warcraft you turn into a pile of bones after a while yeah you, you, you your character has a uh, like your character disappears and a skeleton oh is in its place so this is a, a picture of orgrimmar um mm-hmm. which is one of the it's like the capital orc city uh-huh. Um, so this is like I think this is like the capital uh, city for the horde. <laughs> um, so these are all characters that just died. All uh-huh. of all of these little areas. Wow. I think I think there's an exception. Like some characters can't get affected by it. Like there was some something like one like race you, or something. Well, I mean, I think there was some kind of like you An know armor. amulet or something, okay. piece of armor that you could get or something like that, or maybe there was a race that was resistant to disease. I, I can't really remember, um, but I mean, just piles and piles of dead bodies. Here's here's <laughs> another picture. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I mean, it, it it was it was everywhere. Like you, anywhere you went in the game, if you saw another player at that point, like you you would just turn around and and go your you know the other way unless you had some way of you know staying away from them or you know not being right. affected by it but um i think i started playing world of warcraft right after um, right after this issue this right after this issue happened um it was like i think i started playing in like november of 2005 or like mm-hmm. december of 2005 or something i'm i'm not entirely sure but I remember people talking about it, mm-hmm. um, and like they were like everybody was freaked out because um, for one, like somebody was spreading some kind of rumor about like um, like so- some like terrorist organization like, <laughs> spreading of it in the game. Of I course. remember hearing that. I remember hearing um, people talking about how um, they thought it was like on purpose to like it was like some conspiracy or something mm-hmm. like there were so many weird theories about it that right. like never and this was before they really figured out what was going on yeah what actually how long happened did it, so how long did it last if they had all these conspiracy theories i think it it only lasted for i think a week it lasted uh, a whole week they couldn't fix it in a week yeah it lasted for one week um <laughs> <laughs> so yeah 
the um they were like like you know struggling to get the whatever it was fixed they were trying to figure mm-hmm. out how to fix everything uh with some piece of code that you know some some weird thing they coded it to where like it could accidentally be transferred like they forgot to like set some parameter to 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 not be transferred to pets or whatever mm-hmm. um but basically what happened was a bunch of people in the real world were like, oh, shit, we could totally use this for research. Like, mm-hmm. we could use this for epidemic research. And uh, so, like, a bunch of people from, like, Israel mm-hmm. um, started, like, I guess, studying it and, like, trying to, um, like, they, they I, I guess, contacted Blizzard and, and tried to, um, um, like, get them to release all of their information and, like, statistics mm-hmm. of you know what happened Mm -hmm. during that time like how many people died how fast it spread because i mean i'm pretty sure that they could tell all of those things Mm -hmm. um you know they should be able to have the data i'm I'm pretty sure that there was some kind of change log that would show like um on each server like how many characters died in a certain amount of time yeah for sure i I would be surprised if they didn't have the metadata for that yeah so i i think they requested all of that metadata and um uh, they were also considering using. I think it was like the same people were considering using um, Second Life. Oh yeah. Also, the, uh, I, I don't think there was any sort of outbreak in that, but they were thinking of using it as a like a um, like a model, like a model. They, yeah, exactly. M- maybe like they could, I guess, use their code and like try and like add their own code to it or something. Mm-hmm. Um, but what's interesting is they also use it for terrorism research. Mm. Um, it said, it said, um, the deputy director of the center of terrorism and intelligence studies said that world of Warcraft could provide a powerful new way to study how terrorist cells form and operate while his organization already uses computer, computer models to study terrorist tactics. He explained that world of Warcraft involves people making real decisions in a world with controllable bounds, which could provide a more realistic model for military intelligence analysis. Mm. So like to me, what that says is we want something that we can be completely and utterly um, like we can ambush them with it essentially like, right. So that, that's kind of why people thought that there was a possibility that it could be, um like some kind of like terrorism um mm-hmm. from some from somewhere because they right. were thinking oh well if they're saying that they're going to use it for research what's to say that they didn't put that in into the code in the first place i mean right. think about it the government does all kinds of shady shit we all know mm-hmm. all the crap right i mean i, mean, I, I watched the joe rogan podcast I, I i know all the conspiracy theories but uh-huh. um yeah so uh aside from that there was um <clears throat> there's actually another instance of something similar to this happening in World of Warcraft um in 2008 they released Wrath of the Lich King but right before um it was like a it was like a week in October and they um to to promote the the Wrath of the Lich King um they put an intentional plague in the game and uh like intentionally made people zombies and uh it was contagious but in contrast um there was it was not a hundred percent transmission to nearby characters like corrupted blood was Mm -hmm. uh being in the vicinity of a character infected with the zombie plague represented only a small risk of transmission Okay. So encountering like a lone zombie was not as dangerous as encountering like a large mass of infected. So like okay. I guess they had like different um like percentages, okay. like percentage values. Or, so like Or even if it's like a 1% chance you catch it from one zombie if you enter with like 100 of them then you know there's 100% times 100, not 100. Yeah, exactly. But, right. Yeah, and so and that's why people ran away in the first place in, you know, like whenever the uh, corrupted blood incident was happening because they were like oh shit you know if i go near this person i'm definitely going to catch mm-hmm. the the disease mm-hmm. but this one wasn't as bad um right. people actually liked it and hated it like there was a, yeah. a lot of people that like they, there, they got cr- were there negatives cr- to being a zombie or whatever um i'm not 
actually entirely sure. So um, I don't know why. I don't. It, if it's I, I was playing at that time, but I don't remember that at all. Actually, huh. um, it might have been like a time when I had like quit for a little bit and then saw that the game was, you know, or the expansion was already out, and so I started mm-hmm. playing again. But um, yeah, so that's pretty much um, the corrupted blood incident. Um, the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention uh, also requested all the st- statistics uh, from Blizzard, um, but they were told that it was a glitch. And I think Blizzard actually told them that they didn't have any of the information. Mm. Like they were like, "It's a glitch. We we don't we didn't have like the server information and the metadata from that." Mm. But I don't know why they wouldn't. I'm I'm thinking that they had an obligation to like not share that data with somebody because they it's were sharing pos- it with somebody else. It's possible that they didn't have the metadata. It's also possible that they did because if you think about like if someone dies, that's recorded somewhere. You have to have somewhere in the database that says that they died. But once they right. respawn or you get rezzed or however you come back in World of Warcraft, for the most part, that might be data that doesn't need to be saved anymore. Like you died yesterday. There's no reason for us to keep the data backed up that you died. 30 times in the last six months right so it's possible that the most pertinent metadata that you would want from that incident might not be saved but at the same right. time a lot of games like that do do save a lot of that metadata because it can actually be useful like if you look if you were able to save everyone's deaths or whenever you might be able to see that like oh this raid like people are dying it to this raid like 20% more than a raid that's supposed to be harder, so maybe it needs a small nerf or the other raid needs to be harder. You know what I mean? Like, you can compare right. that metadata. But you're saying this was back in 2005. I mean, how old was the game then? Um, I want to say the game came out in 2001. So, so it was at max like four years four old. Four years old. So, I mean, I guess by then, depending on how big it was. I mean, was it really big back then? I can't remember. Yeah, it was um, pretty big. It, it, was, it, was, it was gaining popularity pretty big, for sure. But I don't know if it was big enough that they would have already been... They they probably should have been uh, saving the metadata back then. I think by two thousand five, it was kind of probably more into its peak. Like, yeah. So I, I'm not sure why they didn't save the metadata back then. I'd be surprised if they're not saving it now after that. Um, I want to say that, but they no, might have had it. And they just didn't that give was it out. that was it. Didn't have any expansions out at that point because okay. the corrupted blood incident, like that, everybody was like level sixty for Zolgarub. Mm-hmm. I remember doing Zolgarub. Uh, I remember doing it, and I was uh, I was playing a rogue, and I really wanted this dagger. Uh-huh. I don't remember what dagger it was, but I really wanted this dagger. And there was like a like a somebody else uh, rolling at the same time, and they I guess I accidentally rolled for greed, and they rolled for greed, and they got it, and they wouldn't give it to me, even <laughs> though that we had like been playing together. And I was like, uh-huh. dude, come on, give me the fucking dagger. I I need it. It's it's got rogue specs. Uh-huh. I think they ended up like going and selling it or something. <laughs> this is one of my this is one of my friends in real life. Oh, really? Like my friend in real life would not give me this fucking dagger. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I've I've been scammed before. I think Anthony on RuneScape, he had some rare items where like they dropped them in like 2001 or something, and then by the time it was like 2010 or something, they were 9 years old and there was only a certain amount of them left in the game, so they were worth like uh, it, well, it wasn't a party hat, which everyone who plays RuneScape knows, um, but it was like some Halloween masks or something, and um, he knew someone. I, I remember I had some Halloween masks. Did you? Yeah. If you still, it, it, on RuneScape? I still have my account, yeah. You still have the Halloween masks? You probably uh-huh. have a ton of money, dude. Really? They're pro- they're worth like they're worth a decent a pretty penny right now. I, think. I have everything I had from when I played. You I should still, check. I can still you should log check in that everything. account and and see how much money you have. <laughs> uh, but he like had a friend who was on his account once or twice or like saw him log in or something. And he logged into his account and just stole all his stuff like someone oh, from God. real life. And like I also, um, <laughs> you know, I remember this was like way back when I was probably like twelve. Um, or whenever it was, maybe earlier when I played RuneScape and I worked like really hard to get a, a mask as well. Um, but back then they were worth like three million or something really small. And like some guys, oh, he's like, let, let me try it on. And we were friends in game for like two oh, years. Oh, God. And I, and I was like, okay, sure. Because we've been friends for two years. And he just like wa- <sighs> bounces out. And I'm just like, come on, man. You learn some so valuable lame. lessons in MMOs, man. Yeah. Because like, 
Yeah. I know uh, my friend Anthony, he actually was like a scammer. I remember like anyone Wait, who plays Anthony, Rings- Anthony? Anthony, yeah, he was. Oh, and, God. Uh, I what remember an there was asshole. like there was no he was an asshole and like he was always like oh come help me scam because I had like a Santa hat so I looked rich <laughs> back then and I was like no dude I'm not gonna be part of this <laughs> how do you scam in 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 RuneScape so here's the thing in RuneScape scamming is actually like RuneScape was I don't know if I'd say fairly unique but um it was more different like in World of Warcraft you die you keep your items right you probably lose what XP or money or something or is there any punishment for death in World of Warcraft? Um, if you die more than once, um, you start getting, like, uh, fatigue. Like, some kind of fatigue. Uh, so you, like, lo- you don't gain as much XP or something? Like, your your, your armor... Um, your Degrades. armor would degrade, and your... Um, like, if, if you kept dying and you kept, like, uh, resurrecting yourself... You, uh, or not resurrecting, but, you know, like, if you kept... Uh, Coming back. Going back to your body, I think you would... There was some kind of penalty for, okay. like... So, Something like that. With RuneScape, the penalty for death was... I don't know how many games he's... Assi- it probably wasn't the only one, but it was fairly unique in the fact that when you died, you lost everything you had, except for your three most valuable items. So, I mean, you'd be going Unless out... Unless you had it in the bank, right? Right. You, you had your bank, but it, anything that you had in your inventory, anything that you had on you, you'd keep your three most valuable items, and there was a prayer you could use that would keep you your fourth. Um, and then if you're in the wilderness, where you could fight other players, if you attacked other players, you could only keep zero items or one if you used the prayer. So, right. if you saw someone wearing even, like, four or five decent decent items, um, then you know they're going to lose two, right? And then you right. would, like, there was different ways. A, a, lot of the, a lot of the scamming back then was you would, like, convince people to, to walk into the wilderness and you would kill them. Or they added, a, they added a ditch that you had to click to make sure to go over and it would tell you a warning. Like, you, this is player player versus player area to like stop like when you go into the wild yeah exactly when you go into the wild yeah and so and then oh god so you guys would take people no no no. i didn't i never i never but this wasn't what he did but (laughs) so like that's the typical way and then they added the ditch and then people were like and they added the warning and then still people would do it because they would drop like a big stack of cash and it was only like i think it was only like 10 I think it was only 10,000 coins would look like this massive stack of coins. That's so They would drop 10K, and the people would run into the wilderness (laughs) to get 10K, and someone would be waiting, like, right out of sight. So when they grabbed the money, they would, like, freeze them and kill them off. (sighs) Um, And then the one time that I got lured, because I was smart enough, because Anthony did it, and I, I, I knew about scams and stuff, so I was fairly, like, wary when someone's like, oh, follow me. But... You could get to, like, level 40 range, and you could go into, like, a ranger's guild. And I'd never been there before, so I'm like, I'm going to go check out this ranger's guild. This is awesome. And this guy's like, hey, follow me up here. <laughs> and at the top of the ranger's guild, there's, like, a, there's like a place where you can train, and you can walk out onto a platform, and a bunch of archers will shoot at you. But depending on which side you go to, they're, like, level 10, level 30, level 70. And he's like, oh, right. come out here. Or he drops something out there or something, and I walk out there, and they all hit, like, tens on me, and I'm just instantly dead. And, like, I remember at the time, I didn't even have anything good. He probably got, like, 20,000 coins from me. Like, he, he spent probably 15 minutes to lure me, and, <laughs> and he got he was probably 20K. Just, he was probably just looking for the thrill of the kill. He could have been. <laughs> but I, with Anthony, the way he, that he lured, the one I, I remember most, and I think this was a fairly underground trick. Like, I don't think it was a very common trick is with luring people into the wild because people knew about that but there was this dungeon or this swamp cave okay and swamp cave you go down you go down into a swamp nice word you go down into a swamp and then you go down into a cave so it's a cave in the swamp Um, swamp cave yeah so you could go down there but in caves in runescape it, it was dark so you had to have like a lantern or a candle or some kind of light source or like a mining helmet and if you didn't, after like 10 seconds, you would start taking a constant one damage. And it would be like one, 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 one. Because like it says you were getting attacked by bugs or something. But it was just a mechanic so that you had to have a light source. Right. Um, but in this swamp cave, there's some mechanic where if you have a lantern, if you have a closed lantern, you know, like a, you know, what, what kind of lantern I'm talking about where it has like glass panes on it and has like a candle in the middle or something. Yeah, if like you have, the ones that you see in movies. Right, like if you have like something like that, it. it's a closed light source. And apparently there was like some swamp gas or like poison gas in there. And so swamp if you had the, gas? Yeah, swamp what gas. Is this the government? If, <laughs> I don't know. But if you had like a lantern that was that was 
um, closed source, nothing would happen, and you could walk in there fine. But if you had a, if you could, ha if you had a candle or any kind of light source that was just an open flame, if you got like halfway through the cave, it would like ignite the swamp gas, and you would take a huge hit of like fifteen or ten or something. Oh my god! And then if you tried to relight your candle, it would hit another ten, it blow up again, <laughs> and then if you didn't relight your candle, you would start taking all those one damage ticks from the bugs. Oh, God. So he would be like, hey, I have this awesome <laughs> clan, and we're having this massive drop party, and you look really cool, and we want you to join our clan. Come follow me for the drop party. And then, oh like, my God. he would drag him out to the swamp, and, like, because everyone knew to be afraid of the wild, but no one knew afra to be afraid of the swamp. And, like, he would take him down, and then and then he would, like, go down the, the rope into the swamp cave, and then he'd be like, oh, wait, I forgot. And he would come back, and he'd be like, here you go. And he'd give him a candle and a tinder box to light the candle. And then they would come down, and they're like, oh, thank you, because, you know, he's, like, giving him a candle and everything, right? Oh, no. <laughs> and he would drag him. They would follow him through the swamp as he as he made his way through. And then they'd get halfway and they'd blow up and then they'd eventually <laughs> die. And like I went with them one time and like I was just there for like just to observe. And like so it was so up. sad. It was so sad seeing these so people because they're like up. the last thing that people type is always just like why or like no <laughs> or like you asshole, you know, like <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes people are angry and sometimes people are just like so sad and I'm just like this is so wrong dude dude um, that's fucking hilarious but yeah it was <laughs> it was pretty funny and I remember there was there was some other scams that I don't think Anthony did but I mean there was one that someone tried to get me with there's like a random monastery and you'd go into it and there was like a, a wine sitting on a table and they'd be like oh bring me 10 of these wines and I'll pay you a bunch of money but for some reason, when you tried to pick up the wine, the monks in the room would all start attacking you, and then the and you'd sit, you'd go over to open the door and leave, and the guy would just sit out there and keep closing the door every time you open it so you couldn't get out. Oh my god! Until you died. <laughs> like That's the scams so are up, so dude. ridiculous, and uh, you don't you don't drop everything that you own anymore on ground, um, or you do, but uh, it's like a t it's based on a longer timer now, so I don't think it's worth scamming. But. I remember playing playing games and having I don't remember if it was uh, Diablo or if it was another game, mm -hmm. uh, but I remember playing with my friends and there was this kid um, that I used to play with. Uh, I forget his name. I think it was like Matt or Chris or something. But um, he would uh, like the the so like the last time I played with him, he um, like killed me or like I died and like. Uh, uh, you lose all your shit and like you know your your friends can pick it up for you or, right like for when like you come back or they can just wait and you can right. come pick it up right. or whatever um i don't i can't i don't remember what so like runescape you, you drop it, everything and your friends could pick it up and get back to you yeah yeah okay. um and uh i like all my stuff dropped and they just kept it it's <laughs> like what the fuck guys like, that happened so back. much when you'd go bossing with people and you'd get killed by the boss and you expect them to like <laughs> give you your stuff back and they're like nope i just made more money than i would have if we killed the boss <laughs> right i want to say it was like some shitty because my my computer like i could play diablo i could play diablo 2 but my friends couldn't play so mm -hmm. we were playing like some like crappy like really pixelated piece of shit game instead mm -hmm. and you know because we could all co-op or whatever and then we all and then we all switched to to runescape but yeah i'm I remember I would just stand in in the uh, in the awe, uh -huh. and I would uh, I would just say big sale, big sale, uh -huh. big sale. I just keep typing big sale, uh -huh. and people would be like, "I'll come see what you have for sale." Uh -huh. And I'd have like a, like a mithril shield and like a bunch of cr like crap it that I was like RuneScape? trying to get rid of. Yeah, this is in RuneScape. Yeah, <laughs> I um I made a bunch of money by um, you know the people who would have the, like the bank sale and it would just be like all random all random crap right yeah um if that was me <laughs> yeah it was you i was probably i probably <laughs> bought from you but in i don't were you a member at any point no okay so there was like that a wasn't. in the members zone there was a town called like um camelot uh, or sears village and there was you know falador or no i guess you wouldn't know yeah. falador world two Farrakh World 1 would have been for Ferador you, right? Or Fer Fer Falador World 2 was where all the members traded, but Verak World oh. 1. Do you remember Verak World 1? There was like yeah. a thousand people there at all times. Yeah. That was Falador World 2 was for the members, and then Verak World 1. Um, in World 2, there was like the thousand people in like Falador, and then there was like like a group of like 100 people at Sears Bank. 
And for some reason, it was like a secondary trading area. And I would go there instead of to Falador, because in Falador, you would sell things like one at a time. Probably just like in Varak, in each zone, people would be selling lobsters. And over here, people would be selling like rune armor. And people over here would be selling whatever. So right. in Sears Village, in the upstairs of the bank, um, everyone would do bank sales. And like for some reason, it was always, they would always have a bunch of clue scroll stuff, which was, I think that was only for members where you'd go on like a treasure hunt and you'd get like junk yeah. items you'd just get like one of them I was like a that. one of them was like a shirt with a cat on it and like <laughs> it was all just garbage items right it was just yeah. like it was all cosmetic i guess um but they were worth a lot because they were kind of rare because you had to go on the treasure hunts and you had like a 10 percent chance of even getting something moderately worthwhile uh, but i would go to these bank sales and then i would like i would see what they're selling and they would put up like 20 items right and um and i would look at it and i'd like calculate it out and i'd be like okay this is worth like 20k and this is worth like 50k and this is worth and i would buy their sale for like 60 or 50 percent of what everything is and i'd buy it all at once and then i would go and sell everything individually and just make bank like that's how i made all my money in that game in like the early early years when I, I played i got all of my money in that game because when i started playing it my friend uh was like stopping playing it so he was mm -hmm. like hey i'll give you all my my gold and i'll give you all my mm -hmm. stuff and i was like oh fuck yeah dude so he gave me like a, a ton of coins i don't remember how much but he mm -hmm. gave me like a ton of coins he gave me like s like some cool wizard hat or something uh -huh. and like a bunch of other just like crap right. and, like he pretty much just like gave me everything he had right and i i sold most of it and like you know i, I kept i think all the rune armor that he gave me Right, but that's only because I had like mithril on before mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. um, but I I would play with this girl, um, girl, and I with think quotes? yeah, or like an yeah, actual no girl. girl. Like okay. I knew her. She, she I went to school with her. Okay. Um, I would play with this girl. What was her name? Uh, well, anyways, I would play with this girl, and like she was like, she's like okay looking, uh -huh. but not like on the like the not the low end of end, good looking the, okay. the lower yeah. end of got you and we would just sit in this fucking room like in, like there was like this like house by um like the bank and i guess varrock varrock was the one with, that was like the outside of varrock had like a like a barbarian cave thing right no, there's there's Verak, which you don't remember Lumbridge, right? Where you spawn originally, and that's like the newbie town. Yeah. And then you go north of Lumbridge, and there's Verak. You just like walk up what, a path what to What was the, the north. other city? And then Falador was to the west of Verak. And in between Falador and Verak, there was like a barbarian village. Yeah, and, and Verak was the one um, that was like closer to all the member stuff, right? Falador was closer to the member stuff. Well, the, the world was kind of... There's well, a gate north of Falador that leads into a member's area. I think it was Varrock. Okay. I think it was at Varrock. Okay. And there was, like, this house that had, like, a basement or something. And, like, every day, I swear to God, like, I would get out of school and I would go, like, I'd get home and I'd be, like, playing. And I'd, like, do, like, pretty much all I wanted to do, you know, uh -huh. like, mined for whatever right. and, like, uh, leveled up or made whatever armor. And then, right. like, I would go down in that room and, like, she would be down there already just, like, talking. Like, like the, she would just use it kind of like AOL chat. Uh -huh. And so, like, I, we had, like, friends in RuneScape. Right. I mean, I didn't know any of them. Like, I know you or No, I, I, or... I had a ton of friends like that as well. Yeah. Um. And so, yeah, we I would just get on and, like, there would just be all of these. There would be, like, fucking ten people like just sitting in there just chatting in this like basement mm -hmm. room like there's nothing in that house like yeah there was there was some <laughs> weird things like that where i know like i think world three or four was a free-to-play world but members hung out there and it was like a chat room in like the middle of varrock in the circle just a little bit north by the castle and like members would go there to like show off and hang out so it was like a <laughs> impromptu kind of like chat place there, like there was always at least like 10 members st sitting in this free-to-play world showing off and like chatting and like uh, that's where I I remember hanging out with those guys a lot, whereas you hung out in this basement. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's really really weird to see the like I I always loved kind of like the UI and like the feel of that game, mm -hmm. even even though it's kind of old and you know mm -hmm. didn't really look that great right. and it it was kind of clunky. Have and you hard seen what the what the like normal RuneScape looks like now? 
I've seen it now, yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's a bit different. <laughs> it's a bit different, yeah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, I always loved, like, the feel of things. Like, when you click on things and, like, the cursor, like... Has that little X? Yeah. yeah it, it was... I don't know. Everything just kind of felt good, even mm-hmm. though the game didn't even look that great. Mm-hmm. I, I and, understand. And uh, it's, it's kind of cool to see, like, the evolution of those games. Because, like, I logged on not even a year ago, I uh-huh. think, um, just to see. Because I was just curious, right. like, what like what had been going on. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, they had like changed Varrock, like the there's like a whole like, um, like trading thing that like it's like uh, one yeah giant... that was um that was when I quit for the first time I think it was 2008 or I think it was 2008 you were I was don't it know if really were... that that yeah it was it was still a long time ago it was, it was 2008 um, when they did that I think so because they I don't know if you remember how bad bots were for a while I don't know if you played through oh, 2007 yeah, yeah. and. For whatever reason, and I think this is a massive reason why their their peak just plummeted, is they got rid of free trade. So you had to trade with someone, and the most you could vary from the trade limit was like 30k. So you could give your friends 30k at a time, but you couldn't give them any more than that. Um, Sorry, I'm just going to move that up a little bit. So if you wanted to sell like a lobster, um, and, and there was like a limit, like you could only trade an extra 30k per hour or something so that bots couldn't just trade all their money away to other accounts and sell it for real money um and oh, so real to quick com- apparently there's old runescape now you can play yeah old there's old RuneScape school RuneScape. And new. if you're interested me and anthony are going to do a hardcore iron man where you can't trade anyone else and so you have to like get everything yourself um like what, if you want to make playing- a runescape right if so like if you want dude honestly i'm down to play runescape okay, man we're gonna do it on old school runescape <laughs> we're gonna make a hardcore iron man and we'll probably play for at least I'll a few p- i'll weeks pay for see. it dude i don't even care yeah i'll be a I, member I, i'm definitely interested because like say a rune plate body that's not really an option for you because if you can't trade anyone you have to get like 98 smithing to make that what if i already have a character though you just make a new one uh, i have to actually you know what if you use, because old school RuneScape is separate, you can log in with your old account. But since you've never logged into old school RuneScape, you can make that account a hardcore Iron Man. See, I'm thinking that I want to say when I was playing RuneScape, it was probably around when did when did RuneScape come out? Do you know? Classic, I think, was 2001, and RuneScape 2, the 3D version, I think, came out in late 2003. I want to say I started playing it. Yeah, did it you said it released in 2001. Did you ever get any of the like events for like Easter or Christmas? Were you ever on for those for those holidays? I think so. Yeah. What do you know if you have like the yo-yo or like um I'm trying to think what some of the other ones are. Like there was a pumpkin I know head. I had some I know I have I know I think I had a pumpkin head and like some gloves, like some skeleton You can kind of date you can kind of date your thing. I think skeleton gloves and the pumpkin head were 2006, so you were at least playing by then. Yeah, I think that um, probably sounds about right. Because I was playing it concurrently with Overwatch. I mean, not Overwatch. Overwatch. Um, Whoa, man. Yeah, this, guy's, this guy's I was I was playing it with, time um, traveling skills. with World of Warcraft. Oh, okay. I'm pretty sure. Um, no, I think I started in 2004. I think it was 2004, late 2004. Because um, oh, I have they the updated Oyo, it is... in 2013. What's that? It says it updated it. was... They made a third iteration of it known as RuneScape 3. Yeah, they changed the combat system massively. Which So back in 2008 when they added the Grand Exchange where you put things up on the offer and they That's buy it That's what back. it was. Yeah. So you, the Grand Exchange. Because you couldn't trade for any like certain amount of value to get rid of bots, there was no longer a free trade. If you killed someone, you didn't get to find their items. You couldn't trade more than 30K. So if you wanted to buy a lobster, like you had to buy it like at base price. So they added the Grand Exchange so that you could change the prices of what you were selling or buying by like five percent and then like you would buy the lowest price that was on the grand exchange like you'd basically just put it up into up into space and then the first person who bought it would buy the cheapest one first um i quit around that time because i thought that was kind of annoying because i played with a bunch of friends we were always trading money and armor back and forth you know right um i could see how that would be and then i i remember they lame. i came back later on because there was a lull and there was no games I had to play. And then I remember, because I played like 2011, 2012, 
when they um, change it to RuneScape three and they updated the graphics and they changed the um, they changed the combat system so it's like any other MMO where you have like abilities and a ton of people hated that and I took a break from that because I was playing other games on Xbox and whatnot uh, but people hated it so much like there was huge like protests or like petitions and things like that and uh, that's Damn. why there's the old school version of the game now is because there was such a significant like version of the player base that were angry that they brought the 2007 version back now it's a lot different than it was in 2007 because they've added a whole bunch of different stuff so now it's basically like a divergence you know like i would love i would love to play that yeah we i think because me and anthony are definitely going to do it and um i think we're going to do hardcore iron man i think because it'll be an interesting challenge because me and anthony have both experienced 2007 i've just i've always i've always wanted to explore because i never i never got to play as a member like i mm. never for some reason i just never bought you know a membership it would be interesting it. to see how you perceive the I game wa- i want to see what that all is like because i could not have so much... i would not have played runescape for nearly as long if i didn't become a member and I, here's a funny oh, story that's too. why that's why i didn't play it that the, long because i wasn't a member the first time i became a member um or the first time i got to see members content um you know they had like the thieving skill and they had farming and slayer and um rune crafting and all these crazy skills so i'm staying with my friend one night and he's like we should become members and i was like that would be so cool and he's like let's use my mom's credit card and i'm like oh no (laughs) i'm like oh no but at the same time i'm like okay because like it's not me right it's not me so we're like but don't you didn't you have to set it up for your account too well, well, here's what. We, so we said he was like getting it ready to do it on his account, and like I was just staying overnight with him. So I was like, I was gonna see it, and I wasn't getting membership on my account. But the first time I got to see member stuff, and then he's oh, like, right, Oh no, right. I don't want to get caught. He's like, Let's make our other friend a member and blame it on him, <laughs> which is stupid <laughs> because like the charge is gonna happen anyways. It's not gonna say what account got membership, right? Uh, so we made our we made like some random friend a member <laughs> for a month. <laughs> and like the first thing we do we're like we walked up to like the level two men that just walk around cities and we're like we can pickpocket now and we just <laughs> pickpocketed for like 20 minutes that's hilarious and then we're like we're like oh we can it, we leveled up to like level four and we're like oh we can we can steal from a tea stall in varrock and we like go to varrock and steal from a tea stall and like Dude, we uh, we killed a man uh, and he I'm dropped sorry. an herb <laughs> and we're like oh my god what is an herb this is crazy and it was like the most oh man basic so that's when you started doing herb that's when i started doing herb but yeah i just i remember like when you're a little kid you know that kind of stuff is exciting and i remember we always saw thieving and if you can look at like the what you can steal from even as a non-member so we would always click on like thieving and be like it says you can steal from this guy and this guy and this guy and like at level 70 you can steal from heroes and we're like that's probably other players and like sometimes we would lose an item and we'd be like oh someone pickpocketed us <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no dude it it definitely sounds like fun like i i I don't know i always wanted to explore that that realm but mm -hmm. you know i i think back then i was getting um i don't think i had like a debit card yet or anything right so what i was doing to get world of warcraft um time was i was going and buying the um credit like the little um i keep saying overwatch Mm-hmm. Uh, the World of Warcraft um, like time cards. They were like thirty oh, bucks yep. for like a two month card, mm-hmm. and I would go to Hastings all the time because okay. like it was it was super close. My brother would drive me mm-hmm. there. Um, I think it was like right down the street from us. Right, and uh, I would buy those cards and use them. So mm-hmm. uh, I, I think that was the reason why I wasn't like ever yeah. able to become a member. RuneScape could have added cards a lot sooner than they did. I think that's a big problem with. You know, like kids, a lot of parents wouldn't let them use credit cards online because, you know, lots of reasons because online was kind of sketchy back then. And Well, I mean, think about it. If you, if you had a son and, and your son came up to you and was like, Dad, can I have your credit card for this game? You'd be like, okay, first off, what game are you looking at? Let me see this. You know, you'd have to, like, check it, make sure it's not some stupid, like, Facebook scam or some yeah, like, it, dumb, it dumb shit like that out dad. of the app store. Yeah, it took a little while before my dad would let me do it, and I. Yeah, your dad was was like hesitant about us. What what was nice too about getting membership (laughs) was that uh, me and my friends got my mom to play. We actually convinced her to play, and she actually played for a long time, like a couple years. No shit. Um, So she was able to vouch for me, like, okay, this game is legit. You know. (laughs) That's Um, funny. No, it was it was it was a good time, but so we're gonna do hardcore Iron Man. So, 
the difference is that it, like you want to experience for the for for the first time. So I'm I'm unsure if it's if it's necessarily wise for you to do a hardcore Ironman. Uh, but we want to do it as a challenge because we've already experienced it before. So if you're if you're up for the challenge, that's fine. But as a hardcore Iron Man, you get like a red skull by your name that shows that you haven't died yet. And then the first time you die, you become just a regular Iron Man. So basically, um, what happens after the second time you die? Well, you're just a hardcore Iron Man. A just bitch says Iron you, Man. Well, you just become like your hardcore Iron Man. You get one life. So once you die, I think it's automatic. Uh, you just become a regular Iron Man, and then in that case, then you just can't trade. Um, but so you, you can just... die as many times as you want. So the challenge gotcha. is not dying, and like if you can like get maxed out, get all your stats, or kill bosses, like you're gonna have this long-term goal of trying not to die uh, as long as you can. And then if you do die, I don't think it, like everything's not lost. You can still be an Iron Man and still do the rules, or abide by the rules of iron man with no trading and certain things like that and then i do believe and we can look this up if you get tired of iron man then you can undo that change and go back to trading i think i'm gonna look that oh. up so then if you, if you don't like it and you do want to like trade and maybe you <clears throat> want to be a merchant and trade and make money that way then you can't do that as an iron man so i think you can uh, undo i'll probably it. do the iron man you, you may as well start as that and and because then we'll all right. be doing the same things together we'll be doing the same goals and like doing the same quests at the same time to try and uh exactly like, and level up together show me around. and like we won't be able to trade each other stuff but we'll all be like okay well we want to go kill like dwarves or something because they drop a, like a black long sword or something. you know what i mean like we'll right. have the same kind of goals and i did play a hardcore iron man briefly uh, with my my friend Kermosetin, who you've seen in the server a few times, but we did it together, and we only played for I only played for like three days, but I remember um, like we went to the Dark Wizards. I don't know if you remember the Dark Wizards south of Verak, like in between yeah. Lumbridge and Verak, and like yeah. it's like a meme that you're gonna die to the Dark Wizards if you're a noob at the game. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was doing the dragons through the Demon Slayer quest, and I'm killing the Dark Wizards. And I thought they were all, like, level 6, but there's one that's level 20. <laughs> and I get killed by a level 20 dark wizard. And I'm like, no. It's so embarrassing dying to the dark wizards. It's like a it sucks to someone suck, who's man. played so much. But, yeah, I, I, I think, yeah, if you're interested in that, then that'd be awesome to add more people into that. Because I, I, the three days that I played, I had a ton of fun, like... Well, I mean, um, you said Hayden was looking for a... Uh, hey, maybe uh, Hayden will do it, too, which which was really funny because Hayden got Twitch Prime. You get, like, a free month of RuneScape a couple months ago. And he's like, oh, oh you really? Should sh he's like, you should show me around uh, RuneScape or whatever. I got that. I got we, Twitch Prime. You might have missed it. I'm not sure if it's retroactive. Well, I've but, had it, though, for, like, months. Well, I, I'm just... I'm wondering if it's only... If you can only use it for like that a month. Year. Um you might be able to claim it still. It was like two months ago, but oh no! The, this month I think was um, you got something for uh, Player Unknown Battlegrounds. Mm. Yeah, you got like a couple pieces of clothing or something. It honestly looked terrible. I yeah, it didn't look very good. I didn't care. But uh, he's like, "Oh, come play the game with me." And we were playing RuneScape three, and we were just wandering around. And I can't remember what he was doing, but like. There's, like, every day you log in, you can, like, open a treasure chest, and you'll get, like, a random item that you could pay money to open more treasure chests, so it's their microtransaction. But you get two free ones a day, and he got, like, a bunch of money doing that. And then he's like, oh, follow me. And I can't remember exactly where we were, but we were just kind of wandering around. I think we were at the Grand Exchange, so everyone was there trading. And then, like, there's people just walking by. They're like, drop party, follow me. And so we're like, all right, let's go to this drop party. <laughs> and uh you like back in the day like back you in didn't get killed with that one no but back in the day people <laughs> did that they would do drop party and then they'd walk up to the wilderness and i remember going with and like not walking in but walking staying at the edge and like seeing if anyone was stupid enough to go in and get killed <laughs> but um no they took us to like the duel arena or something and then they did like they're like check out check us out on live stream and then they like we went to their live stream on twitch and then like, we could watch the live stream where they were dropping the items, so we knew where they were going to appear in 60 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> That's hilarious. And um, we were, like, we were trying to figure out what was going on because they were doing the drop party, and there was only, like, four viewers. And I was like, you could easily get more viewers by dropping free stuff for people, right? But they just, like, advertise it right at the end, right when they start dropping, so no one even tunes into the stream. And then right when they're done That's dropping... Funny. Right when they're done dropping all the items, they ended the stream. And we're like... 
so they're not going to try to transition into playing another game or try to keep the viewers or have them follow. Like, you didn't have to follow. You didn't have to do anything. It was just, there's just check us out on stream, and then they do a drop just party. come get some shit. <laughs> and me and Hayden hung out at the Duel Arena. It was like, and this is, this is by the way, this is like 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the middle of the night one night. <laughs> and then, like, every hour, every two hours, like, a different person would do this. And we were trying to figuring out, figure out, like, if this was some kind of like money laundering scheme, because then at the end of the stream, then they would do like a like a trade me, and then they would randomly click someone who's trading them, and then give them more expensive items, like six hundred thousand gold items, or like one million what? gold items. Yeah, and they're like they're like just trade me, and we'll randomly give give out to like some random person, right? And so me and Hayden were thinking maybe this is like a real world trader where like they're pretending like they're doing a. A giveaway but they're always trading the same person to like give away their items and make it not look like they're actually trading the money and, and right. like, so we thought they were like money laundering right, right? Okay. but then hayden won twice in a row <laughs> and what? Like, and they actually gave it to him and i'm like i'm just like what so we don't know i was thinking maybe like half of them are, are like not necessarily a hacker but it's like maybe a bot account that's trading away its money before they get banned um but we gotcha. could not figuring out. But the most sensical thing for us was like it's some kind of money laundering, and like half the people who trade are, are, picked on purpose, and half the people are just random maybe because like That's if Hayden true. wouldn't have won, I would have certainly thought it was something sketchy, but. I don't know. It was really weird, but that's the most recent time I've played, and it was kind of hilarious just seeing these random drop parties go out every hour throughout the middle of the night. You know, it's just like and and it also as you're walking up to the duel arena. There's, like, people, like, in this square and then, like, off-centered, one square here and then one square here and then one square here, each facing each other across, making, like, a pathway. And they're all yeah. holding, like, these flags and these white robes. And we're like, is this, like, a cult thing? <laughs> and, like, they would spam messages over and over. Like, they were using a chat bot to automatically say something over and over again. Uh, and so you, like, go through this, this like... And it was like it was like bot players, like it was real players, but probably run by like a program that were just standing there. So it was like it was really bizarre, like everything <laughs> about the situation. Like it felt like some weird cult thing, and like I don't know, it was. That would be another cool one to talk about. Is like maybe we could find uh, for one of these episodes, like a like a video game creepy pasta, or like yeah, some, that would some type of stuff. like creepy stories about in-game stuff there is a, um, there was like a there's a runescape player wiki i found by accident one time looking something up and i was just looking at all these names i'm like i don't know any of these people and like i clicked on one and like they were talking about how like they thought this guy was like a leader of a cult where they all had like black skin and purple hair i think it was <laughs> and they all dressed up exactly like him and they all wore like white robes and walked around with like flags and like they'd follow him and they would all like <laughs> chant his name or something and people were like, this is some weird cult thing. I'd have to find <laughs> it again hell? and look it up. But like, it was so hilarious when I was reading it. I'm like, what is this? Um, I The first time I ever played um, World of Warcraft, um, I, you know, level f fucking one, mm -hmm. um, I, I picked um, Night Elf. Okay. Because somebody told me that the Night Elf could, like, flip when they jumped and, like, <laughs> It was a lie. That was apparently the dis like the deciding factor for me. <laughs> no, it, it, I think they like when they jumped, they would either like spin or they would flip. I can't huh. remember exactly. I, I think it was. See, flip. I don't blame you because this game called Rubies of Eventide, which we went through, it was flip because Blood Elves would twirl. Right. So just like you, where you wanted the one with flip, there's a there's an MMO called Rubies of Eventide that me and my friend played briefly, and like all the cl classes were like dwarf orc you know gnome it was and then world of warcraft pretty yeah it was it was very similar to just generic fantasy ones um there's not like a bunch of crazy stuff like warcraft had just the basic dwarf orc whatever human and then there's one called like leshy or something and they floated and like i was always just like yeah that's me i float yeah <laughs> you know what i mean like, <laughs> i float it does not, nothing else <laughs> matters i float i was like listen so. dude this guy's purple he can flip I apparently I could uh, you can uh, shadow meld or whatever, mm -hmm. so you could like go invisible. So I was like, I was all about it. Okay, like, that was my shit. So like, this was and keep in mind, this was like my parents. Like I had had a PC in my room since I was like a kid. I you know I had like a Windows ninety five in my room, mm -hmm. um, but I think this was on a, like a Dell Dimension twenty three hundred or twenty two hundred. It was like this piece of crap like Pentium two 
processor or something like that, mm-hmm. or Pentium 3 processor. Mm-hmm. Um, just could barely run the game. So I think I was running it at like 15 FPS or something, um, or like 10 FPS. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I meet this guy like at, in the spawn city. Um, okay. I think it was like Ashenvale. I'm wrong about that. Mm-hmm. It was like something with like moons or ashes or okay. something. You know, some right. elf shit. Um, but so I meet this guy named Matthias mm-hmm. and he's, uh, he's a night elf hunter and, um, he's like, when I, when I meet him, he's like wearing this, like, like none of his outfit matched. And like, so I, I like, I didn't know anything about world of Warcraft uh-huh. at this point. Like I had, you know, I was playing on You're like a trial a account or whatever. Yeah. I was a noob. I was like a, a kid you know, this is in like 2005, uh-huh. like d- like December of 2005 or something like that. I think I got it for Christmas. Right. I, I don't know, maybe, um, or I bought it with Christmas money. Uh-huh. And uh, <laughs> so, like, I meet this dude, and he's like, "Hey, do you want to like do you want me to show you around? Like, I'll show you how to do stuff." And I was like, "Yeah, I guess so. Like, I don't have anything better to do." This dude takes me on a fucking tour of world of warcraft wow the whole thing wow that's awesome i i stayed up and like i think i started playing when i got home uh this was on like a friday Uh um or like a saturday or something and like i had gotten home from something school or a friend's house or whatever activity so it was probably like sick and i remember this vividly like Mm -hmm. i remember the time like what time i went to bed vividly Mm -hmm. because i think i started at like 5 p.m. and i remember going to bed at like 10 a.m. okay like my parents had already woken up and my dad was making breakfast and i like (laughs) crawled into bed and then they opened my door and they were like come on it's it's time to eat breakfast your dad made a you know cowboy breakfast Uh which is like just a bunch of shit mixed together um but like this dude showed me everything and like because he was like a level uh I want to say he was probably like level 30 or something. Cause he was at that stage where like all of the armor shit. Mm-hmm. Cause I just remember thinking, wow, I hope that not all the armor is like this in this <laughs> game. Cause he had some stupid like hat that had, it was like a leather hat or mm-hmm. something. Cause uh, I, I think at a certain point you get chain mail. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he was still wearing leather. So he must've been like level 20 something. But uh, yeah, so he was wearing like the dumbest shit and uh yeah he he showed me around until like fucking 10 a.m mm-hmm. and uh, i died so many times because things would, like a, a giant spider would just come and like eat me or mm-hmm. uh you know like so, some other player because it was on a pvp server so like some oh, other okay. player would come and just kill me mm-hmm. um so like he he would just and he was so patient too really? uh, and that's what i remember about him he would he would like sit there and like wait by my dead body for me to mm-hmm. like run all the way back and uh like wait for me to get snacks and shit mm-hmm. cuz you know I was like probably like 12 at the time so right. you know uh, right small attention span <laughs> I got to get up and do shit <laughs> but um yeah I don't there was I don't I don't think I ever got scammed in World of Warcraft I I got to say though like shout out to those kind of people because I mean mine wasn't yeah. as extensive as like you getting an entire tour and someone who's patient and just no, waiting s- around for hours seriously though like that that that's will stay with me forever Mm -hmm. like i i will have memories of that forever because it it was like such a a cool thing to do like it he like exposed me to the wonderment of fantasy video games Mm -hmm. like of an open expansive world like that i had never played a game at that point that was that crazy big Mm -hmm. and then and that you know there was that much to do like Mm -hmm. that was pretty much unheard of for me at the time like i mean i'd played runescape and but i you know i hadn't gotten past you know a member like being a member or whatever so like that was like oh my god there's continents on this Mm -hmm. what he's like yeah we got to go down to this thing so we can take a boat to stranglethorn vale i was like we have to take a boat Mm -hmm. to stranglethorn what are you talking about (laughs) like he showed me like we went down to like whatever the port city was for um uh, Kelimdor, I can't remember what it was, but uh-huh. uh, oh, it was like some shore thing, like it was on like the coast, like down, uh, like south from 
Orgrimmar, and you'd get on the boat, and it would take you to Stranglethorn, and then you had to go all the way up. Like, if you wanted to get from Stranglethorn to Stormwind, you'd have to walk all the way through, like, all of these different places. Because, uh-huh. I mean, I, I didn't have any of the Griffin flight places right. at that point because you had to go and talk to each. Um, mm. like, there's, like, Griffins, and the, and the Griffins fly um, to each other. So it, it's kind of like a, like a fast travel system. Like you but unlock you have to, it when you get there? Yeah, you have to unlock it by getting there. Mm. And uh, so, like, to get all the way to Stormwind, you had to, like, walk all the way there and get all the flights on the way there mm-hmm. and then fly back. <laughs> it was, it was a cool experience though, man. Like that's awesome. That, that game completely blew my mind and changed my whole perspective on gaming in general. Yeah. I, and like, it's awesome that people do that kind of thing, show you around. Cause I mean, I didn't have anything nearly as extensive with you, but I mean, I remember when I was like level 10, I'm like killing chickens or something in runescape and someone's like, yeah, here you go, buddy. And he gives you, he gave me like a set of black armor or something, which nowadays that's like 5k or 10k. It's like nothing. But to me, I was <laughs> yeah. like, I was like, this guy's amazing. And like, I still remember it to this day. And it's like such a tiny little thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like my friend that gave me like the rune armor and stuff. Like to me, like at that time I was like, oh shit, dude. Mm-hmm. Like this is what? Right. Right. And I, I remember, um, so I said my mom used to play RuneScape, and this was, like, way, way, way back. Like, this is, like, 2005, six maybe, like, way back. And she just liked to mine and smith. Like, that's all she did because nobody, was, nobody was really nobody was really high-level mining or smithing back then. So, like, she could make adamant armor and stuff all the way back then. And, like, people that's would just so come cool to That's so cool that your mom t- played. <laughs> I know. It was, it was actually awesome. And I remember, like, she could make adamant armor and stuff, so then people would, like, come up to her and be like, can you please make me this adamant plate body or whatever? <laughs> and then she would, like, make them the full set of adamant armor or whatever, and then she would just give it to them for free. And they'd be like, no, I need to pay you or whatever. And she's like, no, that's fine. And then I remember she, she played again briefly in, like, 2011 or 2012 um, just to check it out again. And I remember she said that this guy that she made the adamant armor for, her for like, six years ago still had her added and he was like he's like oh that was so cool of you to make that adam and armor for me in like 2006 here and he, that's like, hilarious he tried to give her like a bunch of money to like pay her back after all that time so it's like people remember that that stuff you know um well i i remember playing um whenever i guess it was whenever the burning crusade came out um i had joined like a guild um like these people invited me in and i was like still like, I think this was on my other character. Like, I switched servers because, like, my friends, like, uh, I lost, like, a bunch of friends at that time, I think. And so, like, I, like, switched servers uh, to be on, like, this other dude that I went to, like, high school with or whatever, or middle school with. Mm-hmm. And um, I I think I, I joined, and then they, like, some other, like, family joined. And it was, like, it was, like, a family. Like, a mom and dad and, a like, a, a daughter, like, oh, joined awesome. together and w- was, like, playing together. And, um, like, I helped them all out because they didn't really know what they were doing. And, like, I kind of knew what I was doing. I think I was, like, mm-hmm. level 60 or something. Mm-hmm. You know, the Burning Crusade just came out. And then the level cap moved up 10, mm-hmm. uh, which stupid. But, um, right. so, like, I, I stopped farming for um nether wing drakes which is like a like a flying mount like a mm-hmm. like a dragon right um i know wait that was a different time sorry <laughs> um i you know stopped what i was doing and like went down and like helped them from like the um newbie area uh, no it wasn't the newbie area it was like one of the like it was after you had gotten out of the newbie area like they were uh, like high enough to be um like in one of the like quest zones okay you know like you went there to help them and so i went there to help them out and everything and uh they were like so thankful they're like oh my god like they they wanted to know everything about my life and i just told them i was a construction worker because i was like fucking like probably 15 at the time or something or like 14 at the time just making this up no i was 14 (laughs) i was like i don't know what to tell them i don't want to tell them i'm a 14 year old because what if they're (laughs) What if they're not really a family? What if it's just, like, three thugs that want to kill me? Three pedos or something? Yeah, because, I mean, <laughs> we didn't have voice chat yet. And then 
it became kind of a problem because we did get voice chat eventually oh. and so they were like wanting to talk to me and i was like fuck i got a kid's voice how am i gonna tell these people <laughs> that i'm a construction worker voice. <laughs> Did like, you eventually talk to make me? my voice real bad and be like i got like some degenerative voice disease <laughs> i can't did i'm you, sorry so did you eventually <laughs> talk to them no i eventually <laughs> talked to them i think i like i was like hey how's it going <laughs> you actually faked like a lower voice uh, uh, my mic at the time was one of those ones that like sat on the desk yeah. and it had like a little piece that came off yeah like a, like a I remember that it's like a like you mean like horrible. a bendy kind of mic or you mean like a no it was a mic that f- just folded down for some oh, reason oh okay I, I think i know what you're talking about it was a piece of shit so thankfully i think that distorted my voice enough you know from it being too close and me know, like whenever i was talking that's a lot would... of that's a lot of optimism for how good the mic would be i don't it's know still probably i mean have a little kid's voice I don't know if at that time TeamSpeak might have also had like some function where I could like lower my voice and make <laughs> it sound lower, but um, yeah, it was nerve wracking because like they like they were turned out to be real, like it was really a family with like a daughter, and like I had been playing with them for like two years, <laughs> so like at that point like we had done so many raids and stuff together that it was like fuck if I don't like they're gonna think I'm a total fraud, and they mm. believed me. As far as I know, they believed me. They thought that I was a construction worker from Austin, Texas, and that I was like, I told them that I was like 18 or something or like 19. Uh-huh. I, w- I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. I mean, I still have a baby face now. If I didn't have this facial hair, this horrible facial hair, I would uh-huh. I would look like a complete baby face. <laughs> so like back then, if you had seen a picture of me, it would have been like, oh, yeah, no, that's a fucking kid. <laughs> <laughs> thank god they didn't have to see that's me that's great dude yeah i it's nice making friendships online and stuff you know like i guess that one didn't necessarily last that long but i mean like i can only imagine you and me are going to be talking for a long time and, yeah dude uh, i mean we're a prime example of that honestly mm-hmm. i mean we've we've uh for full disclosure already met up and vlogs coming on the way <laughs> we're guys. plug for the vlog <laughs> um, plug for the vlog um, yeah no it and, should and be really cool even, we haven't even known each other that long i mean what has it been january at the very earliest when i met trevor right it was it was not that recently D- i think it was january because that's when he built his computer yeah it was january so probably a little after january i probably didn't meet him right away no well because he had already gotten all of his parts and so he was i think he was ab- about to start building at, at the end of december mm-hmm. so it was like right at the beginning of january or so the I end of december on overwatch i wonder if the thread's still up i posted a thread on looking for a team for overwatch and trevor responded and uh, <laughs> we hung out and i was really drunk and i gifted him like a game And then, like, I was like, I'm never going to talk to these people again because I'm, like, really shy when I meet people for the first time unless I'm drunk. So then he's, like, inviting me to play this game. I gave him Risk of Rain. And he's, like, asking me to play it again or play Overwatch with him again. And I'm like, oh, God, I don't don't remember, like, what he's like. I was so drunk. (laughs) And then I'm like, okay, sure, whatever. I'll play with you again. And we we played, like, um, (laughs) Overwatch or something. But I remember it being really awkward because I was sober and I barely knew him. And then he's like, oh, come play come play snow with me and Andrew. And I'm like, I don't know who Andrew is. He's like, oh, he's a really good friend of mine. Let's all play together. We're making a YouTube video. I'm like, I don't know if I want to be part of their YouTube video. And if they didn't, what if he doesn't like me? (laughs) (laughs) Little did we know that you had your own YouTube channel. Right, right, right. way better than ours. Because we had only, like, developed that idea. (laughs) It was way better. Uh, Because we we had the idea for Massively Gone – like, I, I had had the idea for a while, and then I was like, hey, Trevor, you should build a PC. And then, you know, he had finally decided to build a PC. Mm-hmm. And um, so, you know, I helped him with that and everything. And then, um, yeah, I remember that first the first time I met you, he was like, yeah, this is my friend Alex. And I was like, oh, hey. And he has, like, three different friends named Alex. <laughs> so, like, I thought, sincerely thought that you were, like, somebody that he knew in real mm-hmm. life. So I'm pretty sure I just was saying, like, random-ass shit, like, just, 
like not caring at all because i knew i was like oh i'll probably just meet him at like some party or something and uh-huh. you know at, at jared's house you know uh-huh. b- bagel wiggle right. and be like oh yeah no no big deal like i, I was just being weird because i knew you knew him <laughs> but then he was like oh no that's that's just some dude that i met off of um <laughs> reddit and i was like what you just met somebody on Reddit and started playing <laughs> with them? Like, that's so weird. That was so, like, foreign to me. <laughs> but, I mean, I had already started playing. I, I had started playing with, you know, our Canadian friends at that time. So, like, I, I, I've been through all kinds of friend groups, like, throughout the years, mm-hmm. like, with different games. Mm-hmm. But I had never had one like like what we have essentially now, which is basically just a Discord community. Because right. we play games, but we play different games. And I that's probably the reason why i haven't kept in touch with it like touching back with what you were talking about like that's probably why i haven't you know talked to anybody that i once knew before because i quit playing all the games that i had been you know i quit playing world of warcraft i think that discord is very important nowadays because you and me can still play games like you can go and play world of warcraft for a year and i can go and play runescape for a year and we're still going to be in contact because uh, i mean Obviously, di- different Discord servers will diverge or whatever, but, I mean, if it's, like, you and me, we're trying to build a community, like, our community, you and me, and so, like, friends that I meet and friends that you meet will kind of bring to this Discord server, and, you know, like, it'll keep growing as, like, a community where we don't have to play the same game. Because, like, even if you're playing World of Warcraft six hours a day, let's just say that happens somehow, and I'm playing yeah. RuneScape six hours a day, that doesn't That's mean every Friday, me. every once on a Friday night, you're like, oh, let's all get together and play player unknowns battleground or something you know what i mean like we still get to stay in contact without me having to log into world of warcraft or log yeah. into runescape and see you online exactly yeah, I, and i mean it keeps everybody in touch too because you know we you get can to easily get on and, and see and who's talk on to each other in text and you know it's it's persistent so people can see what was said six hours ago when they weren't online yeah it would be much worse if we were just only able to use like battle.net because then mm. we wouldn't be able to like we would only be able to see if you were online in battle.net and then like we'd have to like switch between like steam and battle.net right, exactly. and like this way it's like oh so and so is playing whatever that must mean they're on steam i'll just get on mm-hmm. steam and and invite them to a group or whatever right exactly i think that this is like an incredibly useful tool. discord I, is I, so amazing i hope <laughs> they don't sell out and if they do i hope that someone will take this idea do it again because like being able to see what games people are playing and when they're online and everything like just all that combined is already better than something like team speak and team speak well, might tell you what game you're playing now team speak sucks <laughs> i don't think team speak's that great i've used at, it at the bit. at the time too team speak was f- fucking god awful really? like i remember using it yeah the quality was terrible everybody everybody had the worst mics ever back in you know 2005 2006 so mm-hmm. like Playing with people on, or maybe it was 2007, who fucking knows, but playing with people, like, it just sucked back in the day, like, any kind of voice chat, like, they tried to implement voice chat into World of Warcraft, like, on its own, Mm -hmm. so World of Warcraft was gonna have its own chat, and that pretty much plumped, like, that failed hard. It didn't work. It didn't work. It was really bad, there was a lot of bugs and problems with it, nobody used it, Um, so, like, you were pretty much stuck with with team speak and dude team speak was the worst man i just hated the ui it it just sucked yeah discord is just like amazing every way i mean I don't discord know is if, great i don't know what it's missing that i would want i'm sure they're going to keep adding stuff that i'm like holy crap that's amazing i'm I've video always wanted this and i didn't know i wanted it. oh yeah video you're right that's one video and they are working nice. on that they have said what, they're what, planning to bring what would be really cool is if you could conference call video chat like if you I, could have like a bunch of different people up like in, in one I you mean, know like skype can do that so i'm assuming discord would would go down the same route but maybe they might have a limit of like eight or something but i mean we'll see um hopefully it has like good audio bit rate too because mm-hmm. that's one issue that we've had with this podcast in particular and you know finding any i'm sure other people have any voice over ip program or anything that has decent um bitrate has been a big problem and you know i don't know a ton of audio on about audio um i might be recording at too low of a bitrate and i might not even be getting the like the use out of my mic that i could be getting but i do know that using something like discord which is max of 96 kilobits 
and Skype, which I think is max of 128 kilobits. We could do better than that. It might be acceptable for some people, but for a podcast, you often really want to focus really hard on audio quality because some people are going to just yeah. be listening to it. And I do if, that at work. If it's, I mean, if it's I, not good I quality, listen, no one's going to want to listen to that. When I listen to Joe Rogan's podcast, I mean, I um, pretty much shut it off. The only time I, I ever look at it is when, you know, they're mentioning something that they're looking at or, you know, they're they're – showing something or i'm trying to see the inflection in somebody you know, hmm, like you know, a reaction try, or, or trying yeah trying to see a reaction to something or whatever so i mean that that definitely it rains completely it, it 100% depends on, true. it depends on how you're doing it. i mean i watched some runescape podcasts back in the day uh, that might actually be very telling i don't know if there's any more than the one runescape podcast but they would um they would just do skype video of each of them and then just paste that up and they would do it live and um, with RuneScape, because it's such a casual game where you don't need to be like focused 24-7 unless you're killing bosses, you can have that on one screen and you can have the podcast up on the other, and I was able to watch it. Most podcasts, though, uh, if it's not something I, like that was when I used to play RuneScape, where, you know... Can't do most, that with Overwatch now. <laughs> right, exactly. So if I, if, I li- if I listen to a podcast while I was playing Overwatch or playing any other game or just chilling, it would often be if I'm doing something else or if I'm like... Um, I don't know, I, I was going to say like writing something, but I wouldn't be writing something and listening to a podcast at the same time. But any kind of multitask, you know, if I'm on a car ride or in a plane, you know, just listening to it. And I don't know. I mean, uh, uh, for me, a lot of podcasts is just audio. Uh, but I'm right. sure there's some podcasts where I don't have anything better to do. So I'll just watch the video of it. But And that's why Man. we thought... You know, Andrew was thinking, you know, well, what if we just do audio? And I was like, there's still going to be some people out there who want to see, like, our faces and our reactions. So um, even if the audio's not perfect, and the problem with this is that Andrew sends me his pure audio, and I try to sync it up with the video that I have. So, you know, trying to sync it up and everything, you know, we want to make sure that it's as good as it can be for anyone think so. Right, and I just want to say, if you are watching this to see us, um, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> uh, I don't know why you would want to see. This Andrew's ugly pretty mug. sexy. I don't know how you can take your <laughs> eyes off of him. <laughs> no, right back at you, Cobb. <laughs> um, so Did you I mean guess. Doom Lord? Are you are you sure you meant me? Did you mean Doom Lord? Oh yeah, sorry, Doom Lord. You're right. <laughs> I always get you confused Doom, with Kumar, Doom Lord's the that, hot Kumar, yeah. that like 17 subscriber YouTube channel that I've never heard yeah, of. Yeah, no, fuck that um, guy. <laughs> uh, I guess maybe I can round this back out and come full circle back towards like the corrupted blood and then wrap things up. Is uh, Dude, we've was, talked about everything like under the sun. We talked about podcasting on a podcast. This is going to, well, yeah, this is, <laughs> we're already giving people a little bit of like background info and how, it, how the logistics of our podcast works. But, um, <laughs> God, um, <laughs> no, our podcast is always just going to be us talking and we're going to try to come into it with like one or two topics that we want to talk about so that we can kind of start somewhere and springboard from there. Cause me and Andrew can, can talk about anything for an infinite amount of time, pretty much. We could have kept talking about what we were talking about just now for fucking exactly, more exactly. Hours. So <laughs> for us, I, it's a little bit easier in the podcast format because we're kind of new to this to, to kind of ease in with the subject so that we, we can kind of have a goal to get towards. So um, I guess what I was going to say is, you know, you were talking about Corrupted Bond, which is, as far as I can tell, probably one of the craziest glitches in World of Warcraft. Um, and so I guess I would say, I'll just bring up, since I played RuneScape as my MMO when I was a kid... Um, the craziest glitch that happened there was it was or at least i guess the most notorious i don't know there could have been worse glitches earlier on but there was uh back in the day i don't know you might have heard about this andrew because you might have played around that time i think this was do you remember that player owned houses existed in runescape it was a members a members thing but did you know that yeah they I, I, knew, I knew that it was a thing but okay. I, I so it was around that it. time and i think uh, there was like some really rich people out there at the time, and con- and the construction skill like basically just relied on you buying a ton of planks and a ton of like material, like marble and I don't know what all. Dude, the I remember were. a guy that was like uh, he came to Varrock um, asking to buy like bricks for like millions. 
Wow. Yeah, yeah, it could have been it could have been something like the marble bricks or limestone bricks or something. There was a lot of materials you needed for construction and you needed like even to this day where the price of a lot of things like planks and stuff because of bots back in the day and whatever has fallen a lot, it's still going to cost you like at least a probably a couple hundred million to get to level 99 uh, construction. Damn. But back then it probably costed like, I, I guess back then it probably costed a couple hundred million as well, but that was probably worth like in today's money, like billions of coins. And so the Jesus people that were, the, almost everyone who had 99 in like the first little bit that they got it, they all had like party hats and they were incredibly rich. And you probably know, Andrew, that party hats are like the rarest, most expensive yeah. item in the game. Um but so i think construction came out and i don't remember how soon it was but because it relied on money and you just bought like bulk supplies if you had a ton of money you just shelled out and you would just do construction the fastest way and it's incredibly quick to train i think it was like i think it was between like three days and a week before the first person already got to like level 99 the max level i i think Damn. it was somewhere between there and so the first person who hit 99, they had a house party because anyone could join you and come to your house. And I remember this was a big thing, and it was really fun back then. Because the, the community <laughs> a house was, party. The, well, the community back then was like more about the community and hanging out and not doing anything. And now the community is about making the most money and leveling up. And like nobody's really having fun like they did before, like sitting in Verak basement and chatting for 10 hours. You know, <laughs> it's a lot more. It's a lot more just about getting things done and moving on. Uh, but back then, like, I remember e even my house, I was only, like, level 30 or something, and me and Anthony would hang out there and invite people to come hang out and do all this. But the guy who got 99 first had a massive party, and everyone wanted to go to it because he had the max level. He had the coolest stuff, right? And um, so he had, like, a ton of people at his house, and you could – I don't know how this glitch got through, but you could – have a combat ring built in your house where you could like there was two rings there's a boxing ring and a combat ring and in the boxing ring you could like box people to death and in the combat ring you could attack people normally almost like it's the wilderness but you don't lose anything you just fight it out and that's it um so it's like just like a fun little thing to add to your house right um so they found out and i don't remember if the guy did it on purpose or not i think he got banned so i think he did do it on purpose but if you have people in the combat ring fighting and you kick them out of your house while they're fighting in there. When they exit the house, they can still attack people. Except now there's no safeguard, like, in the ring. So, <laughs> this one guy. Um, his name was, I think, Duriel321. He was one of the ones in the ring. And I think they might have planned this out. And so he just got, like, the best gear he could. And they couldn't attack you back either. And he got the best gear he could, and he just walked around in Falador. Like, he walked north to Falador, and um, he just walked around killing people. And, like, he got a green party hat from some guy. <laughs> what? And, like, there was just, like, hundreds of people gathered around him. And, like, there's mods there saying, everyone bank your items. Everyone bank your items. Everyone bank your items. <laughs> oh, God. And, um, I think back then they never even gave that green party hat back to whoever lost it, which that nowadays sucks. they'll do more rollbacks for things like that. That's like a egregious bug. But um, back then they were just like, I, I guess they didn't have the metadata, just like World of Warcraft. They're like, we don't know exactly who Too this bad. belonged to. See a green party hat. But the thing about that is um, the, there's a video recorded of this, and I'll send it to you in a little bit. <laughs> oh, God. Um, this was the video that like made i don't want to say it made youtube big but it it brought a big amount of people into youtube because everyone on runescape was talking about this and they're like oh you can watch the video it's on youtube and everyone was like what's youtube and i'd never heard about youtube and this was like that was in 2000 didn't youtube come out in 2005 YouTube, youtube came out i think at the very end of 2005 in like the last quarter and i yeah. think this video was at the very latest early 2006 and so, like, a ton of RuneScape players were like, oh, you can watch this on YouTube. And I'd never even heard of a video streaming site. So I go there, and I'm like, oh, wow. And I watch the video, and I'm like, this is crazy. And then I'm like, wow, YouTube is cool. And I'm, like, watching all these videos. And that's how I learned about YouTube. And I have actually been active on YouTube. I had a channel for RuneScape all the way back in 2006. Damn. Um, nice. But, yeah, I, I got my, into YouTube My channel early. was named Seattle Power. Seattle and Power. And I just I – just, had a bunch of grunge music that was in my like i just uploaded a bunch of grunge <laughs> my music. channel has some really old school RuneScape videos so it's like it's kind of embarrassing to go back because i was like 
14 when I, when I finished the Did you the face cam or was it just... No face cam, but one of the big things for RuneScape was that video brought a ton of people from RuneScape to YouTube because everyone wanted to see the video because everyone heard about it. Like, that spread like a rumor like crazy. Like, some guy got outside and he was killing people normally. Like, that was like an urban legend for so long. I think so I long. did hear about that. Yeah, so... It, it, it was it was huge like most people who played especially around that time have heard of it and even now people are still going to be like oh you know you're a veteran if you've heard of this so pretty much everyone's heard of it even if you started later right uh but so i came to youtube did it ever get resolved did he get like how did he he got banned he did get banned because uh, oh. there's video <laughs> evidence of him doing it like <laughs> yeah um <laughs> and I, I think a few other people got hit with the ban because I, I don't it can't have been the only one to exploit it and they did ban the guy who was the owner of that house but I just that was like a huge thing back then and and there was there's some other controversies in that game that were hilarious as well but nothing as crazy as you know someone going rogue and killing people. murdering everybody <laughs> well it's one of those things that every single time it happens i'm surprised that people do it um so he gets out of the house and he can kill people and they can't fight back he's gonna kill people and he's gonna steal their items like Every single time someone discovers a glitch like that, they abuse it and they think they're going to get away and they almost always get banned. Like, it's like <laughs> they're going to find out that all of a sudden you just like some of start some, one killing of them, everybody. And one of them was like some guy found out how to duplicate money so he could like drop money and then like do some kind of crazy maneuver and like start a duel with someone and then like back out of the duel or something. And then all of a sudden there was two piles of cash on the ground, something like that. Some weird duplication glitch. And then it, they, like, duplicated billions of gold. And then, of course, they got banned. And it's like, how do you like, how do, you do this? How and do you like, expect to get away with that? Yeah. <laughs> and maybe maybe the thing is, if they did get away with it, if anyone got away with any of these things, we didn't hear about it. But it just seems like we know that there's a lot of metadata where they're, if they know who to ban, even if there's no video evidence of who did it, and they still get banned, like, there's the metadata that people know that someone's, like, spawning it. Like, all of a sudden... Yesterday, this guy's total worth was two billion, and now today his total worth is ten billion. It's like, where'd that money come from? Yeah, um, twenty-four hour stream, dude. Right. So <laughs> I, I just I don't know how people do it every time, but every single time there's some kind of bug or glitch, it kids out and everyone gets banned. And there might be people who escape who did it like maybe they they instead of everybody doing billions, someone did like one million or something. You know, maybe they yeah. got away, but. It's like if you're out in out in Valador killing people and there's hundreds of people around you, <laughs> you're gonna get caught. Like everyone sees you, right? Yeah, that's so. the thing. Like, I mean, if if you're robbing banks, like you're 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 not gonna hear any stories from the guy that you know successfully robbed a bunch of banks you know right. like he, he's off somewhere it's in true it's true sweden but, or something or but Mexico. there's not video evidence of this guy robbing a bank with his name on his <laughs> name tag on him you yeah. know what i mean <laughs> so like i, I don't yeah. know it's That's it's funny. always been kind of funny to me so <laughs> but that was like the biggest glitch <clears throat> back then and then i started doing the videos the big thing on runescape on youtube and anyone who played or watched the videos on youtube back then everyone did music videos runescape music videos, <laughs> oh god do, like them like singing a song and then they would like edit it to fit and like those got like probably some of them now have hundreds of thousands of views that's awful sounding um, <laughs> it, no it's really stupid but at the same time like there was a huge community around it so i did a lot of that too and i actually had i think the content is really stupid but i was like 13 14 but I did have a ton of fun editing all that together and like trying to get cool effects and like, you know, right. I remember, I think I did a, I'm probably going to give too much information. People are going to find my channel, but I remember I did like a music video for animal I've become or something, you know, that song, I think three days grace or something. And like you could turn into a monkey. So I was like doing that for part of the song, you know, <laughs> I was like a gorilla or something, <laughs> you know, like that shit was funny or fun, I guess. But oh, man. Um, I think I got like 200k views on that channel or something, or 100k views back in, and Damn. this is back in like 2006, 2007, and I did a PK video or two, and I remember, I don't know if you remember way back in like 2005, 2006, 2007, whenever it was, um, the way that they, like now it's trending, back then it was like the number one 
the number 50 videos in the gaming category and the number one to the numbers i was like number 13 in the gaming category in one of my pk videos like i was actually like it had like a star by my video and then it said like number number 13 in gaming today or something and i was like oh damn yeah. i never knew any of that dude yeah it, it was pretty, awesome. it was pretty awesome i'll show you my channel later too um but yeah, I, I had a bunch of fun doing um I, I, this one got, this was back, like, you remember YouTube, if you had any kind of, like, recording of certain music videos, like, they would just take your video off. And, like, yeah. mine got away, uh, but I did a Dan Cook skit in RuneScape, and those were really popular, too. And uh, it got, like, 30,000 views in, like, a week, and then it got taken down, and I'm still sad because it's still, they haven't, like, replaced it, and I want to see how good or bad it was, because, like... It probably would have got 100k views if I would have. A Dane Cook video? You, know. you remember Dane Cook? How he's really popular yeah. back then? I, I remember Dane Cook. <laughs> <laughs> I always thought, like, some of some of the stupid stuff that he said was kind of hilarious. Like, the. I don't know if. Did you listen to him at all back then? Yeah, I did. Like, I the did. one where he's talking about, I just want to be remembered. And he's like, I know how to be remembered. I walked up to a kid who was eating an ice cream and I, I shoved it in his face and I said you're going to remember me forever. And I ran away or something. It's like, that's how you get remembered. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that stuff. I remember really like funny. the, the one where he had to like, wait, uh, he's like telling like his church, his church story. I, I think I had his CD. I had one. Like as his, well. f his first CD. But, um, on that note, Dane cook, uh, <laughs> is that a bike <laughs> killer? <laughs> no, no. I'm just yawning over here. I'm tired. All right, man. I think we wrapped it up and we went full circle. We actually went really long, and uh, hopefully people will appreciate that instead of hating it and being like, I can't watch an hour and a half or however long this is going to be <laughs> podcast. These guys are not interesting enough for more J than a 10-minute My... podcast. Oh, yeah. Well, guess what, guys? You know what? Just look at Alex's face the whole time. No, I'll have okay. you all know, okay, that I have RuneScape music videos out there that have, like, 10K views, okay? He's a fucking I'm star. A legend, okay? Okay? They're out there in the void, okay? You guys um, need to click off of this channel, like the video before you click off, and then go check out, go search whatever he w told you about earlier. <laughs> Find his channel, link it to me. T uh, t I don't have a... Tw Twitter, I'll, but I'll you link can you my tweet channel. it at me if it you want. It would be interesting if someone found my channel. It, it, with the information I, I gave, it's probably not that hard. There's probably not that many of those music videos out there. So the six or seven people that watch this will know which channel to go to. The, the two people <laughs> that watch this, besides me and Andrew, who will also be some of our friends, they'll go find it. Yeah. Um, and my mom. Hey, mom. <laughs> if you see this, mom, uh, none of the stories that I told are true and nothing that i've said is factual so yeah so we we went really heavy on um mmos mostly and i guess a little bit of video games in general uh next week or whenever the next one comes out uh is going to be probably something like some interesting conspiracy theory that we think is interesting to talk about oh and like, i'm not oh my god I'm not, i could get into conspiracy theories i'm man. not believing in a lot of conspiracy theories but even if i think it's ridiculous i think they're still like fun to think about and like read about you know so yeah um so we might do something around around that or um i don't have my list over here but it, it'll be a less video game centric podcast but uh, with me and andrew we both play a lot of video games so i mean our topics will probably revolve around that a moderate bit so and and by the way, I guess I should say this. Me and Andrew both have YouTube channels focused on gaming, so you can check out the Kumlord channel or the Garpin Rancher channel. And uh, can you check put out the our videos if you want? Can you can you put the? I'll I'll put the link. You want me to put link. the links everywhere again? Can you again? put the link? Wait, yeah. We're gonna. This is gonna be a running gag. Every episode, links are just gonna pop up everywhere, like last time. I really that was a really fun uh, edit that I did, and I remember when yeah, you did it. I was one. like, I was like, I know what I'm doing. Um, anyways, I, I, I think that's a good place to end it. So, uh, I mean, if you guys enjoyed and you think this is interesting, we're gonna try to put these out every week. I mean, me and Andrew have a little bit separate schedules, and I have a small amount of health issues, so it's not exactly easy for us to always get this done weekly. So. Um, when we start uploading, we're going to get a little bit of a backlog, but when we start uploading, there may be little breaks and stuff in between, but we're going to try to at least find a schedule. At worst, we'll probably have it, we'll make it every two weeks if we can't do it every week. 
So we're, we are really shooting for once a week. We, we're going uh, for the once a week because me and Andrew both really love doing these. But I mean, we're supposed to do this for an hour. We've run. It says an hour 40, but I mean, we started the recording early. So, I mean, at least dude, probably an could, hour. We 20. could go for two more hours. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> it could just go on yeah. forever. We're so, both talkers. <laughs> yeah. We, and like, I don't know. I guess even to this day, like, I think Andrew's one of the most fun people to talk to. Like, I just have the most fun just chatting back and forth about stuff with him. Oh, so same to you, man. That's why, that's why we were, I was really interested in, in doing this podcast with him. So hopefully people out there watch this and enjoy it. And I mean, if no one does, I mean, we're going to do this anyway because it's enjoyable for us. So yeah, it's fun. Um, we'll see you guys maybe next week. Um, and uh, subscribe. Yeah. Like, and Sub- subscribe. <laughs> like, give us six that we're going to aim for 6,000 likes and 12 views. Okay. I think those are, we can hit those goals. Okay. What do you think, Andrew? I'm thinking like 7,000, 7,000 7, likes. likes and maybe let, let's go big 20 views and one subscriber. Dude, no, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to say this 50 views, 50 views. That was five. I held it oh, five. No. Five zero. 50 views. Someone get the view bot out. Someone get the view bot out. Um, if but yes. you guys, if somebody that's friends or family just want to uh, send, send it to, to everybody everyone in and their then family. Open, it, open it on all of the computers that you have in your house. <laughs> Like it on all of the computers that you have in your house. There you go. Send it to way. on every computer in your house to everybody that you know. Yeah, exactly. Nope. Anyways, we're gonna we just keep going on forever. So yeah. uh, me and Andrew will be back next week. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, we will see you next week. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Deep Lore Podcast. I'm here with... Okay, no, boy. we gotta cut that. We gotta no? cut that. I just did the fucking finger guns, dude. <laughs> <I just laughs> no, did finger, finger guns. I was no. like... <laughs>